Okay, finally got some more work done on the printer. Uh, one change from the last video. Last video, I said that my uh, Y end stop was connected directly from the switch on top of the printer down, up and around to the end stop. Uh, pin on the octopus board. I changed that and did it how it's supposed to be routed where the wire goes from the switch and the printer to this breakout board here which is a four pin connector and you notice there's only two pins it's because this is the uh, two pins that are going to the micro switch. There are normally four wires in here one is a shared ground between the X and Y end stops. And then the fourth wire, uh, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what that carries. But right now I've only got two wires, which is the shared ground and the Y end stop wire. So it comes in here, just like the manual says, except there's two wires removed and then it goes from another plug over to the octopus board so I made that change um, I have the heater wire for the hot end unplugged because the manual says to do that because some octopus boards I guess might boot up with firmware installed that turns the fans and the heaters on so it says make sure HE0 and HE1 are connected well this is HE0 it goes to the octopus board here and there is no HE1 I'm assuming by HE1 it means the bed power I'm gonna leave that plugged in because I don't care if the bed power comes on um, I'm I'll be able to feel it with my hand to feel if it comes on and I can shut it off if I'm worried about it. Um, I don't even really need to unplug HE0 here because I do not have the 14 pin cable connected to the hot end. The hot end, the entire thing is not connected to the end, other end of this wire. So what I'm doing now, um, you can see I have installed all of the skirts. Uh, this skirt piece here has the two fans that connect to this board. And then this skirt piece, this one, and then the touch screen. I have checked, double and triple checked, that the touch screen cable is connected properly to the screen. I then put it through this gap in this frame and then on both of these frame pieces the one here on this side and the one over here there's an actual um, open gap in this piece so that's where I routed the cable it's the exact size it doesn't tell me anywhere that that's what it's for but I'm assuming that's what it's for to guide the cable to the Raspberry Pi where I also made double triple checked that it is plugged in the correct orientation on the Raspberry Pi. I have not put the wire duct covers on because I am about now to do the first power on and if something goes wrong I don't want to have to pry off uh, wire duct pieces to get to the wires. So I am filming this and I'm hopeful that it doesn't blow up. Um, I did the first check which is just powering the AC side on. Again following the LDO uh, revision 2.4 revision C manual online. And that all worked but now all this is wired up and I've done checks on ground wires connected to end stops and things and everything appears to be fine but this will be the first power on with the Raspberry Pi and the octopus board 
And this Raspberry Pi I bought off someone from Facebook Marketplace uh, way back when Raspberry Pis were selling for above their list price and they'd sell out instantly online when they came up on sites. I'm not sure if that's still true or not, but I bought this one off Facebook Marketplace for uh, face value. Um, it's a Raspberry Pi 4. So I probably should have connected power to it to see if it even works before installing it on the printer, but I'm just going to be hopeful that it does work. So I currently have a power cord connected here. And I'm going to turn on the switch and hope nothing goes boom. So the power switch is right here down in the lower left. So let's power it on. I will be looking at the machine and not at my phone. So hopefully nothing will happen other than some lights coming on, which is why I've got dim light right now. I want to be able to see there should be lights on the octopus board. And the Raspberry Pi should have some lights, a uh, red power light and a green light that blinks up here, uh, telling it that, telling me that it is actually loading from the SD card, which is in here that I have installed. Um, I'm actually following the Build It Basement uh, YouTube channel. I've been following his videos and um, got good tips from that and I'm following his electronic uh, firmware section of the video right now. So hopefully this will come up and actually work. Yes, I am super duper nervous because if this blows something up. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Okay. Now I do not have a card in the octopus board. I'm not sure what those two blinking lights are on the octopus board. Hopefully it's because there's no SD card. And up there you can see the red light is the Raspberry Pi. The green light is it reading and writing to the SD card. So Things look good other than I don't know why that light is blinking. Oh, I thought there were two lights, but that's just because the angle I was on, um, that light was bouncing off the metal header, headers below it. So that's not two lights there, that's three lights and one is blinking. So the Raspberry Pi is working. Um, I do not smell burning. That's good. Um, I've got my hand on the bed right now and it does not feel like it is heating up. It feels room temperature. And oh my gosh, look at that. The Raspberry Pi is booting. The screen is upside down. There is information about this uh, in the manual. So this is a common issue and I should be able to fix that it tells you how to do it but this is fantastic it looks like the Raspberry Pi is booting um, I do not have the A and B motors hooked up right now on this printer and I do not have the hot end hooked up on the printer so I'm just trying to work on the software side now before I plug all those in and put it the printer upright and actually see if I get motor movement and all that jazz. So hooray! Um, I will call this a success. Again, I think that flashing light on the octopus board might be because it doesn't have any firmware on it but we can clearly see here that the Raspberry Pi is booting even though it's upside down which as I said 
I kind of expected because the manual talks about your screen might be upside down and here's how you fix it. So now I'm just kind of drawing the video out hoping there's some kind of interesting display when it's done. And it's finished actually loading something useful. But I guess you don't need to see that. The fact that it is actually displaying and loading means that things have gone well so far. Hooray! All right, adding this on to the earlier video, um, I followed the process in the Build It Basement Ultimate Voron 2.4 R2 Clipper 101 video. Um, I will put a link in the description to that video. And I have now got the Raspberry Pi and the Octopus board, um, hopefully working properly. Um, this upper, let me turn this off. All right, this upper red light here was flashing, and I believe that's because there was no firmware on the printer. Uh, once I put the SD card in here with the firmware for the Octopus board, hit the reset button, it flashed the firmware, and that uh, third light there became solid instead of flashing. And I also don't think that green light, I'm not sure if that one was on before or not. So it appears to be up and running. And then I did the change, which again, this is listed in the Voron 2.4 revision C manual under um, setting up your screen. If your screen's upside down, it has you take the SD card out of the Raspberry Pi, comment out one line, and then add two lines to the end of the config file. And sure enough, that has made this display right side up. So, the reason this is not on a clipper screen, I believe, is because the setup video is just the first half. He's got, he split it into two parts. The first one is an hour long. And according to him, it's because the octopus board has shut itself down because it's not sensing the temperatures for, I believe, the um, hot end and the bed. So it doesn't know if they're room temperature, if they're freezing, if they're 5,000 degrees. So it's a safety feature where if it can't detect the temperatures, I think it, it shuts the board down. And it can't detect the temperatures because I unplugged that HE0 line um, and don't have the hot end connected at all. It probably should be detecting bed temperature as room temperature because I did not unplug that. But hopefully the reason why there's no clipper screen on the Raspberry Pi and just the Raspberry Pi there at a login screen. Um, hopefully that's because this is not hooked up to the hot end so it doesn't know what the hot end temperature is and it's a safety feature. So I will get more into that when I go to the second video it is now time for a break and to get some other stuff done I need to get done but major step here I had the skirts installed and I've now put firmware onto the Raspberry Pi and firmware onto the octopus board and so far knock on wood everything looks just fine um, there are some things that I will need to do that uh, either will be in the part two video for the clipper setup from build it basement and some might be other places but because I'm using the chaotic labs tap I know I have to change some code for that because by default this setup is expecting a Z end stop and a Z probe but this is using just a chaotic tap so currently I have Z probe 
wires attached and no Z end stop I believe and I'm not sure if that's right or not so I have to do a little bit more work on the tap to figure out the code changes and to make sure I've got the wiring correct but again this is uh, this is a major step this is actual printer is up and running with the Raspberry Pi the octopus board and firmware has been installed